Hey guys, I'm back for another video, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make your very own spigot server. I know I've uploaded a tutorial on this before, but it is a little outdated, so here I am in 2018 making another one. And I'm going to be making the tutorial in such a way that in future versions of Minecraft this tutorial will still hold through. So let's get started. So to start off, you're going to want to Google Spigot MC, and then you'll be brought to their website. As you can see here, go to the Downloads tab and download the latest version of Build Tools. Once you have Build Tools, you're going to want to get Git Bash. So we go to Git Downloads and then download the latest version for whichever operating system you're running. I already have Git, so I'm not going to install it again. It is a fairly easy installation, so you shouldn't need any tutorial on that. Then you're going to want to make your own directory for your spigot needs. So I'm going to call this folder get spigot. I'm going to put it on my desktop. And then put build tools in there. We are going to want to make a new text file. I'm going to call it tutorial.txt. And in there, we are going to type in a command. You don't have to do this step, but I know for someone like me that forgets things constantly, it's good to have this here. So we will type in Java slash jar build tools dot jar dash dash rev. And then whichever version you're trying to get a spigot jar for. In my case, it's 1.13.2. Of course, if you have some other version like 1.14.0, 1.14, 1.14.2, whatever, that is where you are going to want to put the version is at the end. Save it. And now that you have it in your tutorial.txt, it's as simple as going in the directory for the build tools, right clicking, git bash here, and then you will get a little command prompt, copy your command, and then paste it in. And then you will begin the process of downloading Spigot. Once it's finished, it should show you success. Everything compiled successfully. If not, then uh, you're going to want to look up some forum posts about that one. Oh, and in added detail, if you ever want to update your server with a new build tools, make sure you delete every file in this directory, except for build tools and tutorial.txt. And if there needs to be a new build tools, then go on Spigot and download a new build tools. But do not leave everything here and try to generate a new set of craft bucket and spigot jars. It will not work. Trust me, I've dealt with this problem before. Just letting you know, make sure to start fresh when you want to generate a new craft bucket slash spigot jar version. Anyway, you should now have a craft bucket and spigot jar. So what I'm going to do is make another new folder, call it server, and then Throw in my spigot jar. Of course, if you need the craft bucket jar for making plugins, now you have it. And then what we do is we create a new text document, and then we are going to call it run.bat. So if you don't have the option that allows you to change file extensions, um, you're going to have to go to, I think it's control panel in Windows at least. So you go to control panel, then you go to uh, appearance and personalization, file explorer options and then somewhere in here it should say something like uh let's see <laughs> hide extensions for known file types just uncheck that in windows uh, if you're on a mac then you're on your own you can look that up on your own anyway now that we have run.bat i have some code in the description of this video and in the pinned comment you should paste that in there all right now that you've pasted it in of course, it starts at one gigabyte. So what this code does is it starts spigot.jar with one gigabyte allocated to it. Of course, you're going to want to probably allocate more memory than that. Uh, this is RAM we're dealing with here. Um, I generally use eight gigs, but that's because I have a massive 32 gigabytes of RAM in my computer. Uh, I would say it'd be pretty standard to have two to four gigs uh, allocated. So I'm going to put four. 
Now, this is important. Make sure you have 64-bit Java installed if you want to have more than two gigs of RAM. In some cases, even if you allocate two gigs of RAM, Java won't let you because it's 32-bit. So it's very important that you uninstall the 32-bit version of Java and install the 64-bit Java, which the link is again in the description. Now that you've had the correct version of uh, Spigot installed and you have a batch file with four gigabytes and it uses spigot.jar, as you can see, the same name as the spigot we have over there. Exit out of that and then double click on run.bat. Another command prompt will come up. And then it will immediately stop because it wants you to accept the EULA. So go to EULA.txt, change that false to a true, and save. Then run it again. As you're about to see, it will create a whole bunch of files for you. There we go. So we got logs, pl plugins, world, band IPs, bucket, commands, EULA, blah, 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 blah. You have all these different things. And now it's preparing a spawn area. And this is the point where we verify if the server is correctly running. So let's open up Minecraft. You go to multiplayer, direct connect, and then you should type in local host. What that will do is connect you to any servers that are running on your local network. If you're on a shared network, this might not work. So uh, again, that's a very specific problem that you should probably contact your network administrator to figure out. Uh, anyway, this should work. Localhost, connecting, logging in, joining world, and we are now on our very own server. All by ourselves, if we do slash list, actually I don't have, per I don't have permissions to do anything, I forgot about that. So what you need to do is go into your command prompt on the side here, and do op and then your username so op 30 virus and as you can see in minecraft now i am an operator so i can do slash game mode one. Oh, that's right it's 1.13 survival <laughs> ah, game mode creative there we go now i'm in creative as you can see so we successfully have a server running for one person of course, the point of playing multiplayer is to play with other people. So this is when things get annoying. So if you haven't made it to this step, chances are your network is going to be a bit more complicated to work with because you have a whole bunch of other people maybe running servers or maybe you don't have permissions to do this sort of thing. Again, that's something you're going to want to Google or contact your network administrator. But assuming that you can get localhost running uh, to the point where you can log in by yourself uh, then it is time to move on to the next step. It is time to port forward. What this allows us to do is to let other players log into our network. So the first thing you're going to need to do is figure out how to get to your router's settings. This varies per manufacturer, but um, it's worth trying 192.168.1.1. So that's how we get to optimum. <laughs> Some of them are 192.168.0.1. For me, that doesn't do anything, but for some it does. Another thing you can do to find out what this IP is, is to type what's my IP, and then whatever comes up, paste that into your URL bar. Most of the time I would say to use your IPv4 address, but sometimes IPv6s work as well. And if none of those worked, you can go into, in Windows at least, CMD, and then type in ipconfig. And that should give you some more information to type in. So you have an IPv6, an IPv4, you have a subnet mask, which shouldn't do anything, and then default gateway. So try those three things, the IPv6, the IPv4, and the default gateway. If none of those work, then I would recommend Googling um, getting to router settings and then the manufacturer of your router. Anyway, let's assume that you did make it to your router's settings. So from this point, I am going to be showing you what it looks like on a Lynx's router instead of my own router because I do not have the login for my router at the moment. So 
the default login for routers is admin and password. So literally the word admin as the username and then the word password for the password. If that doesn't work, that means that somebody that uh, owns your network has changed it. So I would either check the router itself or ask whoever owns the network what the login is for the router settings. Not for the internet access, but for the router settings. Anyway, once you've made it in there, you need to go to, in a lot of cases, it's um, the advanced tab. In Linksys's case, I guess it's applications and gaming. And then you for the name, put in Minecraft. For the port, don't do it. Okay, hold on. That tutorial's wrong. Let's try Cisco, actually, because that's just wrong. And then for the start and end ports, you're going to want to do 25565 to 25565. Protocol, TCP slash UDP, or both. And then the IP address you want to put in is your local IP address. So whichever PC you are on, that is what you're going to want. And of course, using IP config, uh, whatever your default gateway was, that is where your PC is. So for example, for me, I think it's something like 192.168.1 and then it's like 0.6 or 7. Some router softwares actually list all the devices on your network. Find yours, figure out what that last number is, put it in. And then of course, make sure to enable it wherever you so happen to be. And once you've added that rule, make sure to save changes and then make sure your server is running and then go back to what's my IP, copy paste that into whatever you're communicating with your friend with, and then hopefully that friend should be able to connect. Now, I cannot stress enough that there is probably some sort of problem that's going to take place during this step. Don't be afraid to Google uh, exactly what your problem is. So just be like, uh, port forward, Minecraft and then put in like the manufacturer of your router. So like uh, TP-Link for example, TP-Link. And then go to images and then you should see relevant information. There's tutorials about this stuff from other people. For example, this one from 2013, an updated one from 2015, and another one from 2017. And we can go to, instead of TP-Link, we can go Netgear. Take advantage of Google, everybody. <laughs> um, I can't have an all-in-one tutorial for every single router manufacturer out there. This is the point where you should probably look up specific information if what I told you doesn't work. Well, anyway, once you've done that, your friend should be able to connect to the IP address um, and then be able to log into your server and make sure that your server is running while they're attempting to do this. Uh, I made that mistake plenty of times and it's like, oh, they can't connect. I guess it doesn't work, but my server was off. So make sure it is on. As you can see, it didn't say that it stopped. And then once you're done playing with your friend, type in slash stop. Well, no, no slash here in the command prompt. You don't need to do slash. And then all you have to do every time you uh, play the game is run.bat. You double click that and then go to your router settings and verify that your computer is still uh, the same one in the list. Uh, when you port forward because sometimes after you restart your computer you are assigned a different number and you have to change the port forward rule to uh, go to your computer well anyway that is it for this video guys of course if you want to put in plugins you just um, plop them in here the jars make sure it's the same version obviously well anyway that is it for this tutorial guys leave a like down below if you enjoyed and if you have any issues make sure to ask in the comments down below and I will do my best to help you out well, anyway, that's it. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys later.